Today on Locked On Canadians, we have a very special guest and we're going to talk about a very special player. It's all Kane Gooley, all episode long. That's coming up on Locked On Canadians. For Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 643 of Locked On Canadians, as well as Locked On Oilers. My name is Laura Sava, one of your hosts, and I'm joined, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Scott Matlin. Today, we're doing a very special crossover. This is the first ever crossover between Locked On Canadians and Locked On Oilers. We've done hey. guest spots. But we have a special guest because our listeners keep asking for it. And I know it's really topical in Edmonton right now. So Brett Holden of Locked On Oilers. Hello and thank you for doing this joint episode with us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I would say finally we have playoff hockey, but we did have some playoff hockey for the Oilers. <laughs> but, but we do have some fun playoff hockey here in town. Some of I actually cheer for right now. That's exciting. And and that's something that, to be honest, that I, I feel like up until the Memorial Cup was in Shawinigan, I wasn't paying all that much attention to it. Now this is now this is a few years back. But with the Canadians having so many prospects, particularly prospects on this side of the pond, um, and making it into the Memorial Cup, particularly this year, there's so much to talk about. But what we want to talk to you about is Caden Gooley, because you've gotten to watch him for quite some time. And all our listeners want to know about him. So I guess... Maybe let's talk about how his season has been in your estimation. I know he was traded onto the Oil Kings and then take it away. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he was sent to the Oil Kings on uh, December 1st in 2021. He was sent over for actually uh, Ottawa Senators prospect uh, Carson Latimer and a 13th overall pick in the uh, 2021 WHL draft. He came over right before the uh, World Junior Hockey Championship or the Canadian uh, training camp that they had for for that and or whatever they call that uh, camp that they have there and uh, so he didn't necessarily suit up for the oil kings right away after the trade so everyone was like "Ooh, this kid's coming over from prince albert and uh, well, as soon as he came back from the the world juniors that was uh, uh unfortunately canceled but a lot of edmonton oilers oil kings fans i should say got to watch him in Edmonton for the World Juniors, and you saw just, uh, he's the captain, so you got to see that leadership quality that he has as well, but you also got to see the, the banging bodies that he just loves to do. Uh, he has had a great season so far for the Oil Kings. He stepped up. It seemed like uh, Dauhaniak was going to be the Oil Kings number one uh, uh, defenseman, and then he Gooley came in, and ever since then, Gooley and Prokop as well have really ran that defense for the Oil Kings. It's funny is that I look at it and I go, ah, oh, he only had 25 points in Edmonton. Like for a guy who's, you know, a little more mature than he is, then I look at it and went, oh, he only played 25 games. So he's a point per game as a defenseman. And offense isn't what he's really known for. He's known for being that physical kind of smart defensive defenseman. And then in the playoffs, not counting the Memorial Cup so far, just the actual WHL playoffs or the championship, he put up 16 points in 19 games. And he's just, uh, as one of my uh, our writers over at Eyes on the Prize says, he's a menace to society when he's on the ice and he's on. He Just watching overtime tonight and everything, and I look at this and I go, Laura and I both had our reservations when this pick was made in the first place because it seemed very safe. And now I look at it and go, kid skates well he's oh. a physical menace he puts up decent offensive numbers they don't need him to be you know a 65 point nhl defenseman but he has all the markings of someone that's going to be a guy who plays a lot of minutes and is just solid his his growth as an overall player this year has been a treat to watch as someone who doesn't get to watch a ton of the whl because 10 30 starts are a no bueno kind of thing <laughs> when you live on the east coast unfortunately so I, I trust what I see in highlights and checking the score sheets. And I I am so excited for Caden Gooley at the professional level. And based on what you're telling us, like, I'm glad that he got to Edmonton and everyone was like, 
hell yeah, Caden Gooley rules because <laughs> hell yeah, Caden Gooley rules, man. Like, yeah, just impressive. Yeah. Well, the the thing about Caden Gooley and the thing about, honestly, the Edmonton Oil Kings in general is that the Edmonton Oil Kings are, aren't run like a major junior hockey team. They're run like a professional hockey team. They have all of these, these organizations inside of the organization. They have all these different things for the Oil Kings players to really get the most out of themselves as not only players but as human beings as well you take a look at all the guys that the oil kings have on this team not only do they have Caden Gooley they have guys like they traded for Luke Prokop who is an Edmonton boy but he's a third round pick for the Nashville Predators you have guys like uh, Jakob Demick who's a, a pick for uh, the Vegas Golden Knights Jake Neighbors for the St. Louis Blues Justin Sordiff you got for the Florida Panthers you've got a plethora I haven't even mentioned Dylan Gunther either who went in the top 10 as well you have a ton of guys who are professionals already jake neighbors played nhl games Caden gooley has played for the laval uh, uh laval rocket you have had guys who have been in professional organizations playing as well in what feels like a professional organization so the maturity level on so many of these kids are so up and high and beyond the guys that are normally coming out of the whl it is amazing to see and we're going to talk in just one moment about what Kane Gooley still needs to work on to improve as he gets to the professional level. I'm excited to ask Brett a couple more questions. But first, we got to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is one of our favorite sponsors. They are delicious and it is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And if you're like me, you have crazy busy days and you need your energy. I get that 3 p.m. need for pick me up or sometimes I forget breakfast. What I'll do is I'll pull out a Built Bar. It, it's literally like eating a candy bar, but they're high in protein and they're low in sugar, which is so important because it picks my energy back up. And Scott and Carly take them on hikes with them. And you can do that. You can you can have it in your gym bag. You can, you can you know, anytime. It's an anytime kind of thing. And they're all so good and so high in protein. They have flavors like, flavors like mud pie. I mean, are you kidding me? And then you've got granola bars. They're so, so good. And if you want to try these built bars that we keep talking about, what you're going to do is you're going to go to built.com and enter promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off the order. That is built.com and the promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. All right. On your first listen of the day, available wherever you get your podcast as well as on YouTube, it is Locked On Oilers joining Locked On Canadians. And Brett Holden has been kind enough to share his thoughts on Kane Gooley, having watched him for, you know, since December 1st, as we were talking about in our first segment. What we kind of want to talk about now is Caden Gooley, like, what does he need to do to take the next step? For me, he was drafted and the the reporting on him was he's a defensive defenseman, right? So you do expect him to be a little bit tougher or have that like heavy presence, right? But what I have noticed is that he's been really good at seeing the play, reading the play, making decisions. Like he's not going to be the guy that's always putting up the points. That's not going to be his role. But what the general consensus has been with Caden Gooley, particularly in Montreal and amongst, you know, some of the prospect ex experts that we're talking about, is that he's solidly the number two defenseman in the future for the Montreal Canadiens. So what does he need to do based on his play currently to kind of, you know, we're expecting he's going to be on the rocket next year with a trying to, you know, trying to make the NHL out of that. But let's just say he's probably going to be in Laval. What are the aspects of his game you see he needs to take the next step on? I think it, it, it kind of starts with the cooler head. He is a, a leader for most of the teams that he goes to play on. Obviously, as we already mentioned, he went to the World Junior Hockey Championship for the, the for Team Canada and was the captain there. He came into Edmonton and immediately stepped in as the number one guy for the Oilers. Well, 1A, 1B with uh, Luke Prokop on that first pairing. But it's just sometimes, I wouldn't say he gets hot-headed, but sometimes you see those not necessarily dumb penalties or dumb hits, but those are those big. He's a bigger guy, and he knows when to hit. He knows when to throw his body, but he's still a kid, you know? It, it, it's still, he's still got those hormones going. So hopefully he can mature a little more. There is a little bit more maturity to go there. There's so much to like about Caden Gooley, though. 
The one thing that I do also want to talk about for Caden Gooley, as you mentioned as well, both both of you, honestly, is the the offensive scoring. Yes, he did have a point per game for the Oil Kings. In fact, in uh, his two best seasons, both 40-point campaigns for Caden Gooley. But he's not going to be expected to do that at the next level. So reining himself in, realizing that, hey, I'm going to be pulling myself out of position if I'm going to be forcing this this pinch, forcing this extra pass, forcing this extra going into the offensive zone. Because if you watch him in the Memorial Cup, you see him all of a sudden leading a rush, and you're like, whoa, whoa, hold on. What is you're 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 going ahead of Jake Neighbors here right now, and now a guy has to the cover you back here, right? And so if there's a transition or a turnover made. He's now the trailer and out of position as well. So he has to realize that he's not going to be that offensive defenseman that people are offensive upside, I should say, for uh, Caden Gooley at the next level. So making sure he also reins it in there as well. It, it seems like it, he's a very smart player. Like he, he, his, a lot of his strength comes off of knowing where to be on the ice, lining up his hits. And it just feels like this is that next step in his maturity. He adjusts to the speed of the next level, the AHL or the NHL, wherever he may be, and kind of figures it out from there. Because like you said, I've seen him be more aggressive in the Memorial Cup here so far and in the WHL playoffs. I don't know if that's just a confidence thing, a uh, systems thing within the Oil Kings that for Martin St. Louis at the NHL level, we very well might see that more often uh, in the AHL. The defenseman sometimes, but they're usually a first pass and out kind of thing. He's going to have to learn on the fly there that he doesn't have to be the hero, I think, too, as part of it. Learning to play. He's obviously a team player. Like I said, he's a leader and he knows what he's doing. But he doesn't have to activate kind of that hero mentality to make things happen. And that comes with game maturity. And like from when he was drafted and watching some of his highlights there to his time in the AHL to the WHL last year to this year, you see it, it it feels like he's not far off from being a very NHL ready player and then that conti- that kind of you know sets a baseline and then he gets to that next level there. You know, his next level of growth is okay, what can I do to become an everyday NHL player now? A good everyday NHL player and I just the intelligence there, it doesn't make me worry like it does with some other players who might be physically gifted or you know play that physical style. I'm not worried about that with him because he has everything going on up in his head that just makes it work for him. Now, I'm curious for on your side is how do you see uh, Montreal and most, well, more specifically uh, uh, Martin St. Louis, how do you see him kind of using defensemen? Obviously it's kind of, it's a systematic play as a coach depending from coach to coach philosophy do you see him kind of fitting into a martin st louis regimen or uh, is it a wait and see type of thing it's it's tough to say because the one issue laura and i both had under martin st louis is that the defensive knowledge or the defensive systems weren't quite where we wanted them to be and their current uh, guy who runs the defense, Luke Richardson, is interviewing for the job in Chicago. So they might have a new defensive systems coach here. And it, it was kind of fast and loose in that it was very passive when it didn't need to be. And Gooley's game isn't based off passiveness at all. And I think with a full training camp, they're going to be able to get what they want out of there. I think he's going to be a welcome addition because I look at Joel Edmondson playing very well. I look at how Jeff Petrie played at his best. Alexander Romanov, when he's playing at his best, is they're not being told to be passive. They're told being told to engage, meet people before they can get into the zone to make things happen. And Caden Gooley, with his skating ability and his ability to read those plays, I think is going to be a boon for Martin St. Louis and for the Rocket in the AHL. They don't allow a ton of shots on net because they are more aggressive with the way they handle the puck and defensemen. And I think it's going to really help Gooley get that confidence at the pro level. And it's going to modernize their defense a little bit. Last year when it ended, they were, uh, I I don't feel bad saying they were terrible. They were awful defensively. And that was with trades happening and obviously Shea Weber being out. I think Caden Gooley uh, could very quickly endear himself to Martin St. Louis and whatever coach uh, he plays for in Montreal or Laval next season. 
I think the challenge in Montreal with so many young players and so many of the veterans expected to be outgoing is that there is going to be a lot of change. And some of these players, I think it's going to be a balance because they're going to want to rely on these players to grow, but the players are also going to need a lot of guidance. And for me, the thing with Martin St. Louis system is that, first of all, he didn't have enough time to implement it. And as Scott mentioned, there's a lot of turnover and all of that. But the problem, I think, was that the defensive issues were ingrained in this team since um, Claude Julien left, right? So the defense as a whole, you would watch them, they'd be out of position, they'd make bad reads, uh, you know, the penalty kill was abysmal. There were a lot of things like that. And a lot of the play as a team before Martin St. Louis came in was not very aggressive. And, and I, I just heard Scott use that word aggressive. I feel like Caden Gouley, particularly when you're talking about how much he wants to join the rush and be part of that transition play, I think you know, Martin St. Louis will be able to bring out offensive play in him. I think for me, the challenge is seeing the defense as a unit right now. Mm. And I, I don't necessarily worry that they'll play him too much or anything like that. But I do think that particularly when we're talking about goaltenders and defensemen, they need to play a lot of games. They need to play a lot of games and a lot of minutes in order to be able to get those reads that Martin St. Louis is always talking about. So I do think they will start him in Lavelle. And I personally feel that right now Laval is more ready in terms of defensive play overall I don't know if our, our, our YouTube viewers can see my pen every time somebody says something I'm taking notes because I'm going to be talking about Keaton Gooley all summer long <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think that's definitely um, a little bit of a challenge. Is not necessarily how he will fit in, but how they're going to deal with the defensive strategy of the team as a whole. Completely. No, and and I think the big thing there, like you mentioned, was the reads at the next level. Just making sure that you are able. It's a fast game. It's obviously. A, I mean, you see what happens in the Memorial Cup. That's a fast game. I mean, in this Oil Kings game against the uh, St. John Sea Dogs, they have the Oil Kings were up through nothing. Then all of a sudden it was three two at that for the St. John Sea Dogs, and you're like, what just happened? So that's a fast game, but it's an even faster game at the next level. So I, yeah, that's a really good point. I think in our next segment, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on, first of all, the couple of games that we've already seen in the Memorial Cup, as well as what are the Oil Kings going to do without without Caden Gooley? How do they replace him? And that's all coming up in just one moment. All right. Let's turn it over to the Oil Kings now as a group. And, the you know, the first two games in the Memorial Cup uh, that they had... I think personally, I was actually, I will say that I followed the entire playoff run through highlights, uh, <laughs> partly because, you know, Laval, the Laval Rocket were playing, there was QMJHL stuff going on, there were a lot of other prospects. So for me, I only got to see when he did something good, right? And we just talked about how many points he had in that short stint, right? 19 games, 16 points, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so... I want to I want to hear kind of about his journey in the Memorial Cup or to the Memorial Cup and sort of you know you just alluded to a point where like there was a turnover because he was trying to lead the rush too much and so was there a lot of that or was it more he was a driving force in some of the offense I, I, what, what's your estimation of his play on his team right now? The kid leads. And excuse me if you start hearing yourself uh, mirror a little bit. My AirPod just died, so I, I'm going a little a little. Uh, blind or deaf here a little bit but uh yeah no um he has really led the team the thing about uh well especially from the back end the thing about again the oil kings and the defensive core is they do have luke pro cop right next to him who again is a top end talent the guy was the, uh, one of the top stars in the game against the uh, shawinigan cataract had a goal and assist there he has a, it's a full system for the Oil Kings, not only defensively, but on that forward core as well. So many of them are homegrown. And uh, the top-end talent, like the Justin Sordifs, uh, the the Caden Goolies, and the uh, Luke Prokops were traded for. But then the rest of the group and the, the core of the group were all just grown from within. Dylan Gunther, Jake Neighbors, uh, uh, Dalhaniak was a... Uh, 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 Import, not an import draft, uh, bantam draft player as well. Uh, Sebastian Kosha is uh, uh, an Edmonton boy as well. And so they are all Edmonton players. So they not only have that homegrown feeling, but again, Caden Gooley just led that 
defensive court, led the team. Even though he's not the captain, he you still have that feeling of a leader no matter what. When he's on the ice, you're following that number four to say, hey, he's going out there and going into the hard battles. I'm going to go in there and win those puck battles along with him because that's my leader. That is the guy who's leading us into battle. And that is exactly the type of guy you need, at, again, at the WHL, at the AHL, it, on any team ever, really. It, it's, it, it's really exciting for the Oil Kings, and this might not necessarily become a little bit of a tangent, but for the Edmonton Oil Kings, this has been brewing for the last three years. This has kind of been the team that they had before COVID hit, and then COVID did hit, and then the shortened seasons, you know, just kind of all oh, games are getting canceled here and there. And then the Oilers started to get or Oilers, the Oil Kings started to get those top talents like the Caden Ghoulies. And then it just all sort of come came together like we're seeing now. It is exciting not only for now, but this does also give that Schwinnigan Memorial Cup feel that you mentioned as well, because that was the Oil Kings' first Memorial Cup uh, appearance since coming back to Edmonton. It's kind of giving that kind of magical feel again with all that top-end talent. Everything you're saying makes me feel like Laval's going to love him. JF Hool's going to love him. And then they're going to have to say goodbye to him a little bit too soon. Does it feel like like the Oil, King, Oil Kings are saying goodbye to him a little bit too soon? Because my assumption is 100% he's going to be in at least Laval next year, right? Like, I think that's what's going to happen. Oh, 100%. I was thinking about it today, just watching him. And I'm like, man, like thinking about all the players that they have on this team. And you're like, Oh, are they going to be back next year? Oh, well, now they're going to take the next step. Like, man, it's really too bad because, yeah, it, I've really enjoyed watching them. You talk to die hard Oil Kings fans, and they're going, this has been one of the best things to happen to the Oil Kings for a while. It's, it, yeah, it's unfortunate because you put it, when you put it that way, I'm kind of like, oh, man, yeah, you're right. But, yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I my question with this is that because we've watched him play, like you said, with Luke Prokop, who's been, you know, just incredible for the Oil Kings after coming over from Calgary. And is Ghoulie's flexibility to just kind of be the guy making it easier for, you know, Edmonton to be like, OK, well, we want, you know, two just, you know, guys to play defensive minutes here. We're going to let Prokop kind of run the show offensively and we're going to want you guys to do this or, hey. We want you to just, you know, do this. Is that flexibility in his game? He doesn't have to be tied to Luke Prokop to be effective. That that has to endear him to coaches, just that flexibility. And like you said, it's tough that he's been here 25 games plus the playoff run, and then it's that's how the CHL works, though, unless you're like basically London where you just cycle talent and every four to five years, then this team's good and these teams are bad. This is Edmonton at their peak right now. Like I said, you've got Genther, you've got Prokop, you've got Gouli, you've got all these pieces. Make the most of it, right? And that flexibility and the professionalism of a lot of these players, you know, it shows a lot. Yeah, and that, and that's the thing is they are consummate pros no matter. Like, it, it, it almost, again, goes back to what we were saying about the the – organization as a whole it, it is run like a professional club and it again it's not only for them as a player but them as a person so yeah as soon as Caden Gooley again he did obviously have Luke Prokop this season with the Oil Kings but he was drafted as a Prince Albert Raider he was drafted 16th overall as a, 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 a Prince Albert Raider he has that professionalism in him. No matter where he's going to go, no matter where he's going to step into, he will be the guy. And whether that is the number one guy or the guy or the number two guy, he will be right there for you being just as effective as anybody else on the team. I think Habs fans are really excited. As we mentioned prior to recording to us, Caden Gooley is the next number one prospect on, in the system right now until they draft first overall, and we'll see what happens after they draft first overall. Um, you know, I, I personally, I think everybody's excited to see him 
play, not just in Laval, but in Montreal. And, you know, I think he has the capability to be the guy in Montreal, especially if the expectations aren't too fast. I know the expectations are always going to be high because it is Montreal. As long as the expectations aren't too soon, I think is is the way is the way for us to go. So I think before we go, I just wanted to, to ask if you had any parting thoughts for Locked On Oilers listeners about the Oil Kings and Gouli and the Memorial Cup. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Well, the thing about the Oil Kings is that they are an exciting team. As I mentioned, so many of these guys are homegrown talents. Honestly, there are some of those guys that you may know somebody who went to high school with one of them or something like that. You know, it. it, it even though it is, uh, it's not really professional hockey, I guess, technically, but it does feel like it. These are still A, kids, but B, the future of the game. There's number 44 for the Edmonton Oil Kings. His name's Carter Such. I watched his first game. In fact, I was in college when he was still in, uh, when he was playing his first game. It was one of the first Oil Kings games that I covered as, I don't want to say professional because it was, it was, I was a student at the time, but I got to watch him grow from that game to tonight where he was throwing deets in the Memorial Cup, just looking top notch. And, you, you know, you get to grow along with this team. And it's so exciting to see. I think Carter Sutch should be a guy who's taken in the draft. There's so many guys, uh, uh, Simon Kubitschek as well, who I think should be taken in the draft too. Uh, there, there are so many guys. Plus, also, if we're going to talk about Memorial Cup too, just a little, 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 little oil, Oilers thing here. Xavier Borgo is also <laughs> playing in it as well. So, and he's not too bad either. So, uh, yeah, something as well for uh, Oilers fans to take a watch for too. I think all of the feelings you just described is one of the reasons that the Canadians fans always want more drafting from the QMJHL. I know like people make it to be like just a language thing or whatever, but I also think it just, they're playing in your backyard, right? The Montreal Canadiens fan base is this entire province at this point, unless you're so diehard a Nordiques fan that you you could never cheer for the Habs. <laughs> but you know, there's there are a lot of players in the queue that you watch, you get attached to. And I think for us this season, what's happened with Riley Kidney and particularly Joshua Ra was there was an excitement. There was there was like a, it felt like a connection with for the Habs. And so like that's I think that's kind of what you're describing with with the Oil Kings there. And so that is one of the reasons I think it's it, it always gets reduced to language or politics. But no, it's it's really feeling connected to the players being able to just you know see them on a saturday night or friday night yeah. or wherever it, whenever it is that they play they, they sometimes have odd schedules um but in the meantime i think scott do you have any parting questions or thoughts i i think we got everything because it helps to kind of pry into someone who's watched a lot more of this like admittedly my fault is that i live on the east coast and cannot stay up that late to watch games <laughs> i have tried you have three uh, jobs. <laughs> I do have three jobs. And that's the thing is it's like, it's Saturday night. I'm like, cool. I can stay up and watch a WHL game and 11 o'clock rolls around and I'm watching the late game in the NHL. I'm just kind of going, I'm not making it. I'm not making it. Okay. I'm going to ask other people their opinions because I am old now and can't make it to midnight most nights. So I am grateful to know that the things that I have seen are what people who watch this team more often are also seeing. Don't. And just that everybody loves Caden Gooley unless they're playing against him. It's <laughs> I'm ha I don't like being wrong about things because I'm a prideful, petty person. <laughs> I am very happy to be wrong in this situation and just seeing what you know Gooley has blossomed into and knowing if he's with the Rocket next year, he's right in my wheelhouse for what I cover, or he's going to be in Montreal and he's going to be a menace to society, or however you say that in French, which I do not know. <laughs> I'm excited. It makes me excited. It's been a while since we've been really, truly thrilled about the future uh, in Montreal. The last couple of years have helped bring that back. And Caden Gooley's right at the forefront of that. It's so exciting. And I want to thank Brett and, and to our listeners, you know, I, I really hope that you got what we got out of this episode, which is just getting extra excited about Caden Gooley. And as we <laughs> promised, we are going to continue to talk about him. We have neglected him woefully over the course of the last couple of weeks because we kept talking about Shane Wright versus Slavkovsky and all of that. But he is somebody that is slated to make the team soon enough that we will have more. But Brett, I really want to thank you for your thoughts. And I really, really think our listeners will enjoy this episode. Thank you so much for having me again. I, I love be getting a, getting the opportunity to talk about the Oil Kings. I've watched them since they came back in 08. And just being able to talk about anybody on the Oil Kings is fun. So thank you so much for having me again. 
Of course. Thank you for your time. And so if you would like to follow Brett, he's at the real Holden 40 <laughs> uh, and locked on Oilers is at locked on Oilers on Twitter. Uh, if you want to follow us, we're at LO underscore Canadians and you can email us at locked on Canadians at gmail.com. Scott is at Scott Matla. I am at the active stick. Thank you so much for listening to both of these episodes. Remember you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, and don't forget to check out locked on NHL where they're covering the Stanley cup final and all issues in hockey. There's been coaching changes and hirings and firings. All of that is on locked on NHL. Make them your second listen of the day. Thank you so much for listening. Both of our shows will be back tomorrow.